Since he joined forces with Pauline Hanson two years ago, James Ashby has attracted nearly as much attention as the One Nation leader herself. There's a natural obsession that media have with myself. It's the same natural obsession which was created with Peter Credlin some years ago, and it's not like I'm asking for this. His latest controversy, a secretly recorded 2016 conversation that was leaked to the media today. There is an opportunity for us to make some money on this, if we play this smart. The opportunity was the upcoming Queensland election, and the overcharging of candidates for electoral materials such as banners and posters, which could be claimed back through the Australian Electoral Commission. I will deny I ever said this, but what stops us from, from getting a, a, a middleman or gracing, uh, like I'm happy to grace you the cash, or double the price of whatever it is. James Ashby says it was a brainstorming session nearly 12 months ago with his leader and two others that he didn't know was being recorded. Look, the words, I guess, are embarrassing and there was um, certainly a lapse there and I could have chosen better words. Am I embarrassed about the fact that we want to make sure that this party survives long term? No, I'm not. It's another drama among many for a party already under investigation for electoral declarations. The One Nation leader today stood loyally with her media advisor, denying any attempt to circumvent electoral laws. It was an issue that was raised and it was knocked on the head there and then. So we never, it's never gone into to be implemented at all. The leaking of James Ashby's conversation reveals internal divisions that have plagued the party over the past 12 months, with at least eight Queensland candidates being disendorsed or quit after disputes over fees and offensive comments on social media. One of those candidates, Diane Happ, is speaking out for the first time to 7.30. I don't want to see the party go down in flames. I don't want to see her go down in flames. I want to see Ashby go down in flames because I think he'll bring her down in flames. I really do. I think, you know, he's, he's, a, he's a viper, he's a snake, he's, he's nasty stuff. Diane Happ, who was pre-selected to stand for a Gold Coast seat, still considers herself to be a One Nation true believer. It's more probably an objection vote to the Liberal Party, and I believe probably like Donald Trump, the Muslim thing um, gets a lot of people, and the Chinese buying our land. But she fell out with the party over the very issue James Ashby was talking about in today's leaked tapes, candidates paying for electoral material. Diane Happ says she could only afford a fraction of the $3,500 candidates had to contribute. She planned a fundraiser to help, but this was cancelled by head office, leading to a heated conversation with party campaign director Michael Pucci, which Diane Happ recorded and played to 7.30. Michael Pucci has told 7.30 this was part of a long-running dispute about Diane Happ falling behind in payments she agreed to make. But the former candidate claimed she was never told the money was needed to pay for the campaign material printed by a company owned by James Ashby. Well, I didn't know it was his printing company and I wonder why they were being so... The election hasn't even been called. Why are you bullying people for fees? Three and a half thousand dollars as a package for candidates to have their core flutes printed at $5.50 each, banners at $110, thousand business cards for $77. I don't think there's too many candidates that can truly complain about those prices. In fact, I think most political parties would be envious of the deals that we've managed to strike throughout the, the state. And keep James mind, Ashby makes no apology for the way he runs the party. Let's not kid ourselves. Political parties over the years have survived because they run them like a business. And my intention is to see One Nation survive long into the future. We're not just here for the short term. And you'd see more organisation during amateur hour. Right? They've, they've forgotten that they are the hunted. They're always the hunted. They need to be as squeaky clean as possible. Businessman Robert Pascali claimed almost 10% of the vote for One Nation in the Sunshine Coast seat of Fairfax in last year's federal election. 
He says the campaign was a mess, with only frail elderly volunteers and a dated membership list. Most of the people there, the average age would have been 70 plus, and I don't think it would have been updated since the prior election three years ago. And when I came, uh, when I said I was going to run for Fairfax, they said, oh, there'll be volunteers and there, there's going to be small groups that will give you uh, help. There was none. There was none coming. And in actual fact, the last three or four weeks, it was very difficult to contact anyone from the, from the head office. Today, he's catching up with some of those volunteers to tell them he won't be running for One Nation unless the party cleans up its act. As I said, she came in like a cyclone at the moment. I think she's just a gust of wind at the moment. Like Diane Happ, Robert Pascali fell out with One Nation over campaign expenses probably cost me between 10 and 12 grand, uh, 10 or 12,000. I did keep a spreadsheet and uh, One Nation will get you to sign an authority form saying I'll only claim these expenses no more than 10,000. Well, I only claimed 5,000 worth. Well, I only got a, a fraction, a small fraction of that back. Pauline Hanson says the leaking of James Ashby's potentially illegal fundraising idea was clearly done by disaffected One Nation ex-staffers. But the question remains, why do so many former One Nation backers feel the need to air their grievances in public? Unfortunately, sometimes these things happen. We're not the only political party which has had people try and bring the party down. We've seen it across all parties. But um, look, it's disappointing. Um, am I regretful of the, the chosen words? Yeah, I am. But I can't take it back. It is what it is.